The subject of this interview is Miss Cheryl Opper, and today's date is December 3, 2011. This interview is being conducted at Schools on Wheeled in Brockton and is part of the Civic Voices International Democracy Memory Bank project. Miss Opper, would you please confirm that you have signed the deed of gift authorizing the Memory Bank project to make this interview available to future researchers? Yes, I have signed it. And Taylor, have you signed it too? I have signed it. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll begin with our first question. So Taylor, you were obviously in this program, so when did you first get involved in the School on Wheels program? I first got involved in the School on Wheels program when I was a freshman in high school, and I was actually getting tutored myself because I was homeless. And if you don't mind, would you like mind telling us a little about your story? Or oh, it's fine. <laughs> um, when I was going in the summer, going into my freshman year in high school, I, my house got evicted, so we were forced to move out and into a shelter. But the first step to that was going into a hotel, and then we got placed into the Evelyn House. And we, when we first went there, the first week we were there, we met Cheryl and the organization, and we just instantly clicked and been involved ever since. Um, how has School on Wheels impacted you? It has impacted me a lot, in a lot of different ways. Um, well, first, getting me through my freshman year of high school, getting back and forth, and also giving me all the supplies that I need that I couldn't get myself. Um, also, helping me with my uniform for my shop cosmetology that I got accepted into along with the shoes and my homecoming dress for my very first homecoming actually was really <laughs> great and um then since then we just been they've helped me also with school stuff ever since and i've been a tutor with them and they just helped me win a scholarship for the rise on life rising star award five thousand dollars so it was, it's great um Um, what role, uh, sorry, <laughs> what do you take away from this experience and like how would you like, um, yeah, what do you take away from this experience? Well, you've kind of answered that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you um, like, like tutoring the kids? Is it kind of yeah. like helping bring it back around? Yeah, you know? it's good to give back, like when you've been in that situation yourself. Mm -hmm and you think that it means the world to you, but then when you see, like, you give back to somebody else and then you see how much it means to them, mm -hmm. it's, like, a really good feeling. Yeah. And, um, also, you said you're going into cosmo um, cosmetology. <laughs> cosmetology. <laughs> and did, um, the schools on meals, like, impact that decision, or did you just know, like, right away you wanted to be that? I always wanted to be that since I was little, but it was, uh, getting accepted into the shop that was... They helped me a lot with my grades, keeping up so I could be accepted into it. So that meant, like, a lot to me. And I wouldn't have been able to get my uniform without them. So, so you're uh, enjoying that. and um, It's helped your sister, too, has it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, was able to finish her last year in Rockland. And then she started going to... Um, school in Brockton and now they also help her with her school supplies and anything else she needs especially books she loves reading and <laughs> actually in one of her backpacks she got a book and she fell in love with it and it's a whole series so now she's hooked on it and that's what actually got her to start reading that's like, awesome how, so. and how old did you say it was? she's 13 and you won the award for rising star so how great do you think the leap was from where you were to like where you are now <laughs> it's really big leap. Like it take I put enough thought that I'd be like had this much going for me yeah. when I first started the program. So it's a good feeling. Sure. So with Taylor that the Sunlight Rising Star <coughs> is given to um, exceptional students and so we nominated her through School on Wheels 
and we nominated her because she has um, stayed focused on her education despite the obstacles of homelessness and she has really worked hard to keep her grades up and she's a great student but also what's really important to Sunlight Rising Star is that students give back to their community so in addition to her being involved with School on Wheels and being one of our tutors and a spokesperson she's on our advisory council and the only um, teenager who is on our advisory council is Taylor and um, the Sunlight Rising Star program started last year. Um, Sunlight is committing um, a certain amount of dollars, $165,000 just to the um, Massachusetts to give three students, outstanding students, a $5,000 scholarship towards their college as well as the agencies that nominate the student we receive a $50,000 grant as well. So that is huge, but Sun Life is really committed to helping students that um, are facing obstacles to stay in high school, graduate, and then go on to college. And we really believe at School on Wheels is that education empowers students to reach their full potential and ultimately break the cycle of homelessness. And so um, Taylor is a shining example of that. And do you mind expanding on what you do as, like, an advisor for the schools in your school? Um, we help, like, with the ideas of things and um, what else we can do for school and meals. Okay. So she's helped with the mm -hmm. stuffing of the backpacks and school supplies and the summer reading bags and um, all kinds of different things. Her sister and her continued to receive tutoring after they moved out of shelter. We have a program for our graduated families, and so Taylor and... Our sister, um, we were able to pay for the transportation for them when they moved out of shelter into an apartment. Um, the McKinney Vento funds are no longer provided for families, and that McKinney Vento is a law that protects children that are impacted by homelessness, that they're able to continue to go to their school of origin. And when Taylor moved um, in Brittany with their father into an apartment in Brockton, um, we were able to pay for the transportation so that she could continue. Um, finishing her freshman year in Hanover, and her sister was in Rockland, um, finishing up her um, elementary school. And, and so that was really great. But Taylor and Brittany then continued to come to our School on Wheels office in Brockton and be tutored by some really terrific tutors. And our goal is to have the same tutor stay with the same student for as long as possible. So. That's great. Okay. Um, I don't mind us asking about you, Sarah. Um, where were you first, well, where were you born and what was your childhood like? I was born in Anderson, Indiana. I had a, uh, my mom and dad got married um, young, so my parents were 20 years old when they had me. I was the first born, um, and so I had really fun parents. They were young and hip and, um, you know, they were very committed to community service. Um, I remember growing up that they were very active in our church and uh, my mom was a Cub Scout leader and taught, you know, um, my dad taught Sunday school classes and my mom was the volleyball coach and um, really engaged in the community and both my parents did prison ministry um, through the college campus program there and the church and so I grew up um, knowing that it's so important to help others and to share your gifts that you're blessed with with other people. And so um, I feel really lucky that I had those two terrific role models. I also have um, a sister and brother um, and who's also involved in, in giving back to their community as well. And I moved out to the East Coast because I married somebody who's from Randolph, Massachusetts, so I'm here now, but all my family still lives in Indiana. Um, could you expand on um, this charity organizations and how those like impacted you? Were there any specific ones that led you to be so active in the community? Um, are you talking about growing up or talking about now as in a, um, with School on Wheels? I think growing up. Yeah. Actually. Like in your community, were there any ones that really caught your eye? Yeah. So I did, um, in college, I did the Big Sister, Big Brother, Big Sister program. And um, now that I think about School on Wheels, that's what it's all about, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, is that I really um, liked having um, to be the big sister to somebody who 
um, needed to have a positive adult role model in their life, and it was very rewarding to kind of watch their confidence grow. Um, it's so important to help build up a child's self-esteem. It's hard to learn or do anything well in your life if you don't have good self-esteem. And so many of the kids that um, you know that we work with at School on Wheels has had a lot of um, a lot of obstacles they've had to overcome and a lot of situations they've had to deal with that you know you and I would never even know how to get you know maybe get through that but what amazes me the most is about kids that are um, ha experiencing um, difficult situations is their resiliency is that they're so resilient and so thankful um, we take a lot of things for granted because we have so much in our life but um, I guess the big sister and the other thing is is I've always enjoyed working with older adults so I used to volunteer at a nursing home and then um, when I got out of um, college when I graduated from Indiana State University I ended up um, teaching senior adult fitness for years and, and I really like that and um, I feel blessed because I've, I've worked um, in many different fields but I knew as a um, a young person that I wanted to be a teacher. I always knew that I wanted to work with kids that, um, that that's, and I feel blessed because now I'm doing that through School on Wheels. Mm -hmm. Taylor, whenever you need to go, you can go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Just yeah. so like, when you know. Are you all set? I, you don't need me anymore. You well, will. Whenever you would to like stay to. And join, like chime in whenever, but if your mom's here, I don't <laughs> want you to like, think you have to stay. You tell her to come and then you can just stay here till she gets here. Yeah, she said it's going to be here past her. Okay, what time is it right now? It's 2.06. So it would be, it would, we would love for you to keep, okay. to stay here and keep yeah. on. Just don't want to pressure you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to feel like you have to stay. So, but, so her mom's coming in about like 15 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> um, could you tell us how you became politically aware of the civic, civic, Civic projects. How I became politically aware of the homelessness in our community yes. based yeah. on and started School and Wheel. So I read an article in Family Circle magazine. It was in the November issue of 2003 and I was actually at my daughter's school. She was a freshman. I had just moved to Easton and was really looking for community volunteerism to get to know other people in my community. Um, I've always been in, actively involved in my daughter's school, and so I was doing, um, working with the eighth graders on a career path finding thing that they were doing a project um, on the computers, trying to figure out what they would be good at later on in life or what their interests were. Mm -hmm. And I picked up a magazine in the guidance counselor's office that was um, Family Circle magazine, and it was the November issue, and I was looking for a pumpkin cheesecake recipe, thinking that. Um, Thanksgiving was coming up and I picked, opened up the article um, as I was looking flipping through the magazine there was an article that really caught my eye it was called Lessons in Love and it was about Agnes Stevens who was the founder of School on Wheels in California it was a retired teacher who started this program out in California because she saw kids on the streets during school hours and wondered why they weren't in school and so I what I really admired about Agnes is that she stopped her car and she did something about it. And every day, each of us drive past things that we think that are wrong. And we see social injustice every day. It's not right for kids during school hours to be out on the streets and not to be in school. And when she stopped her car and started talking to the families, they were she found out they were being de denied access to school because of lost records and lost immunizations. Um, they didn't have a permanent residence. There was 350 families living on Skid Row in Los Angeles. And Agnes, one by one, took those families to the school, made sure they got the school uniforms that they needed, got the bus transportation, and that they had the resources they needed. She helped the families that were experiencing homelessness understand their rights through the McKinney-Vento. It's a law that protects children and guarantees that every child has a right to a quality education, but if you're experiencing homelessness, how do you know about that law? Agnes stopped her car and said, I'm going to do something about it. And when I read that, I said, I can do that here in Massachusetts. So I called her, and, um, and six months later, we started School on Wheels in Massachusetts. It's really amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You are, too. <laughs> Thank you. It makes such a big difference. Yeah. Um, 
Your, what was your major in college? It was um, early childhood development and family services. And so, um, again, I was um, getting my certification to teach kindergarten and preschool. I really